here I will make this tie list because because yes a guy is annoying me to make this church and he gave me this template and it's the tie list of the temples that is coming let me put this shit in English Type in blogs. Here you can get all the classes. Some introduction and every class has the damage spell on it on his best element. So it's open ended for everyone. Let's start with Kra. Because I think Kra really gets the point going. Well, the Kra maintain the range of the damage hole. The attack from far away. Still nice little additions and details. That's that's a lie, man. They have the passive. That they get one more range on all the spells. So that's more effective about the, the Grimori, the new spells that you can get. He has the Hunted stats. Where he can put on a target and do more damage to that one. And he cannot put someone else into that state until the target is defeated. So, pure fucking damage. Only for itself. Immobilize the caster to increase the spell damage and range for the current turn. So this is quite alike a cry spell on Dofus Torch. It takes away his movement and do some more damage. Inflicts damage and moves back on self. So it's like that Wakfu old cry spell where he jumps back on self. And does some fucking damage. No elements in area, it seems. It's a parameter in all elements. So this is it. These are the four spells of Kra. So. If we come here, we have Kra, and you can put Hira on useless. <laughs> because that we don't see, and we can comparatively put it down or up. It's C because it really sucks. If you play with Kra, it's not about the explosive, it is about the single land, the ability to take three movement points away, the ability to use the the retreat, the recue, I do not know the name in English, that you can shove the enemy to the other side of the freaking screen. The ability of using this version where you can move things from far away. All of those abilities is what makes the crab broken. Not the fucking damage. And as you can see, the Kra lost it all. It lost its fucking buffs. And it could actually buff itself like itself like mad and hit insanely only because of that. It lost its ability to move things, to take movement points away. It simply does some damage now. Does not even buff the other people with range and shit. So it's a really bad change for Kra. They can only do damage. And for that reason, I'm also going to have two, two things. This one I will grade them individually and take it down a little. This is the individual Kra. The individual Kra, he's alone fighting. And he really sucks because he cannot shove the enemy away, not do anything. There will probably be spells like that, but that's for everyone. The Kra having one range of those spells is not going to make much shit. And here I'm going to put on an A tie. Because this is in a group. In a group, they can just do damage. A group needs a damage. Let's go with that. Next, 
it's a side here. I do not understand what the side that do. So let's go for the Yop up here. The Yop has been boosted to be a monster on on the weapons. It costs one less action point. That is simply absurd. I think everyone will be using daggers so they can use it for two points and that will be broken shit. They'll have to patch it middle way. They have this one. With five a battle strategy. Defines. Increases the damage taken by the opponents. What the fuck is this? Utility active. They take the resistance away from some enemies or, or something. It's incomprehensible. But it increasing the damage taken by the opponents. Straight away you can see. This helps everyone. The, the opponent themselves start taking more damage. Different from the hunted state that Consider increasing damage. That's weird. Does not specify here if it is for everyone. But on French, I had the impression it was only for the crowd. Art of War. Increase the damage you inflict with a weapon. This is pretty fucking weak. Because you cannot stack with classic masters. So if you use your Dagger Master, it will not go with this spell. So it should be better than a Mastery. It's kind of strange, but it shows that it has even more power with the Dagger than before. This is absolutely broken. The Yop rushes, it jumps, it changes place. It requires that how powerful Sakria is skill. And even reflect the damage they're taking. How broken is that? And then does damage on a large area. How freaking superior is this class to this shit? So, this is the group 1. And ranking now the two damages that we have in our front. This clearly goes down real bad. You cannot compare with a Yop. On that thing. It's much weaker. It's much better in a group. It doesn't help anyone. Just does damage and passes its turn. So that's why. On a group. Comparing these two hitters. They have the same function. Although this is a ranged one. You cannot compare to the damage output. That the op seems to have now. Although we have no idea. What the fuck is this. Inflicts this damage in here area it does not tell us actual numbers but as things seems kara is real bad a yop alone cannot even use that stupid changing places spell it cannot bond anymore that's pretty bad but you do not need to bond if you're just going to hush the motherfucker with two up action point daggers they will run away and hope to not get caught. It can only jump one place. This one does not mind getting caught. You just fucking hate the enemy dead. Now any rips here. Any rips here, it's pretty weird. They went back to the any rips of the previous temples. As you can see, every time it heals. It either gets a bonus damage or the target gets. That's the mechanics of the old Temporus where any ellipses became some immense damage booster. It would just put things, people with over 200 damage bones. And that can be good for itself or for the group. Can even use area healing. This is pretty bullshit. I hate these kind of spells. That both do damage and heal. It's like instead of having animal sawing, I could just have healing and attacking on my claw. It's completely broken. Like I'm gaining extra spells. This is unfair. And also, sometimes I want to hit my enemy. If there was some Silag bullshit where everyone over 90% dies, I would need to hit my friend. But because the game started putting every spell like this, I could not even hit my friends anymore. Now it has. 
injection. The same fucking shit. Inflicts damage. This one says best element. This uh, inflicted damage. This is very random down instead of having an actual healing spell and another. But yeah. We will understand once we actually see the range of these things, the power of each, the cost of each. Prevents the next source of damage. What a motherfucking hell. It's like a uh, one time. How would that spell called? Feka? Immunity. Crazy shit. Summons a flower on the target cell. It explodes at the end of turn. Inflicts damage on enemies and heal allies in the area of effect. Also applies a damage bonus. That's like the special spell now that you become a bomb. But now you do not need to become and fuck yourself in a summon a flower. It is really weird and it's clearly a top targeting in group. I place it with your is not S because it no longer gives action point. Sad noise, it sucks because of that. It's a downgrade because of that. But it clearly can heal in area, can do damage, and can buff damage to people. That is pretty fucking good. Replace it on S. Yeah, replace it on S for now. The best support we have. And by itself. It can buff damage itself, it can use those powers by itself. It can use the flower probably to heal itself. So it's a pretty solid class, but once again, it's pretty bad alone. It cannot buff action point by itself. It cannot shove the enemy. It has no way to escape if it gets locked. And that's pretty awful. It's a downgrade once again to what the class was. With its shitty ton of spells. Now we have here Eka Flip. <laughs> here, this crazy rolling the coin. The passive one. Every time you draw and change the states from one to four. So every time you use a spell, you gain a random one, then you can use that. That's some pretty troublesome mechanics. I would hate to be counting this shit. It's random, the one you get, so you cannot actually choose what you want to use. Pair. Oh, it's a pair. It's a random pair of any shit. It buffs range. How much does it cost to use? A critical hit. So it gives crits. Fixed damage. So some plus 50 damage. Which becomes increasingly worse as you level up. But yeah. Final damage. That's quite unlikely. Supposing each has 25% chance, this would be 25, 12 and a half, 6 and 75, and this would be like 3 and something percent of getting this final damage increase. So that's the passive and the one is spelled just for this shit. And it, this probably costs action points to use. It has no bad effects, just good ones, so there is no excitement about it. I quite dislike this mechanic. It's troublesome, it's confusing, it takes a lot of time to actually get it going. And then there is no excitement about what will come out, just if you get a good draw or not. Trump card increases the target's final damage. I buff someone for myself, and there is no bad effect. Once again, where is the Eka Flip hand in this man? What is the Eka Flip 
fun and excitement. Yes, it increases your final damage and that's it. Inflicts ranged damage. That's it. What is that? The information, man. It inflicts what? 1 to 60? It inflicts on... It does not say if it's the best damage. Inflicts damage in an area of effect around the target. These are all things the Eka Flip does not have. It does damage. It does not say if it is part of that inflicts on your best damage or if it is random. Like some recall that only uses one kind of damage. It has no information and it looks like a completely normal class. What is the Eka Flip fun on it? Increases the target's final damage. What else does it do? Does it put some bad effect? Randomly, some bad roulette shit. There is no roulette, there is no aircraft flippy luck to protect yourself. So, this is one of the classes that have been destroyed the most. The cry is still ranged, although it has no utility. But Eka, Eka is absolute shit now. That's no fun. Now, should I classify this as the fun of Eka or being actually a reliable class now? I think it has an Eka player. It's pretty bad. Just does damage. At which point it's inferior to Yop. That is it. It lost its Eka fun. It buffs yourself or someone. It also, on a group, people do not care about the, the Eka fucking things up. So, on a group, I would put it on B actually. Because it can. Here, increase the targets. It can buff a target. This one can only buff itself, but if it can buff a target and it can do damage in every normal damage, perhaps a C or a B. It's better than Kra. Kra just does damage by itself. Now, the Shellor. The Excelor, if we pronounce it right. English people say Zellor. So, one turn does some damage. And next one they can steal action points. Does not tell the, the amount, but I suppose everything will become a horologian. Steal action points. Chronosphere. Best element and removes movement points. Like what the actual fuck? The shallow is taking away movement points instead of action points now. So it can buff movement points. It's completely uncharacteristic. But that happens on, on touch. These teleportation things. It's very confusing but I think it's very fun. I really like it. Inflicts damage around the target. Like do some other damage. And that's it. No information about the cost, the effects, but it will steal action points or do this. If it can steal action points in area like this, it can be quite broken. Around the target, is that one cell or one? Teleport the target symmetrically. Teleport the shell of target cell. Oh, this one just jumps. I read it wrong. I, I thought I was reading this one. This one teleports things around a point. That's that's real fun to play with. Like the workful sheller that has several spells like this. This one's kind of cool, kind of not. He lost its ability to jump around freely around the stage, the rule back power. It cannot try to hate the enemy now. You can only steal action points on odd turns. On the other one, you are unable to take action points. That is really bizarre. But overall, it seems to be pretty fun. They took away the action points thing and increased the damage. Substantially, it seems. And increased the, the mobility. But by instead of putting it to be mobile, by putting it to be crazy shit teleportation spells. So I think the... The shell is pretty solid. You can... Where is it? It's this one. You can use that by yourself. 
just as well as you can use on a group. Yeah, you don't even need to group to use any of these things. So it's the most solid one for solo play up to now. Because this one you have to be really in itself to get the buff. Like what the fuck? That's not how life works. And if you have to it cannot buff it self action points, not in the shell. Yeah. But it can just can do all the shit. Now on a group I think it's substantially weak. It cannot hit like this. It cannot reliably steal action points. Like you are fighting the fucking reeling branch. You are a shaller. And you cannot fucking stop the thing from healing because you cannot take the action points at your will. And what if you do not even fucking want to take action points? What if you just want to play? What if you are doing that stupid challenge where you time flies that you cannot take action points? Well, fuck you. You cannot choose. You will steal that shit once you are more. The only way to not steal it is to not use your actual spells here. And that is it's pretty awful if you take it down further. <laughs> it does it to fuck every challenge it gets. It's hand too. But by itself, I take it down again. It should be as good as the Yop. It has some damage, but you know, jump by itself. And like this too, that can no longer buff action points. But they have some solid other alternatives. Where is it? Okay, now the run. They can cannot be locked. But can I lock the enemy though? Can I lock? They have one movement point. This is quite broken. Like this guy simply comes with one extra movement point that's broken. Inflicts damage and he still comes. That's just bullshit. That's like the that agility spell. Is it on a straight line? Is it from far away? Is it a little damage? We have no idea. So you cannot judge anything from this. Great increase this runs all of land a critical hit for a short period of time. So it's like that, that normal critical spell. But it lasts less time than they say here and it's more powerful. But you have no lethal? Why do we care? Places a trap that inflicts damage on the best element. And attract the targets in a cross towards its center. So it's like that intelligence trap that they put on 2013 bit 4 increase the trap to damage so you just buff yourself with this and put the trap you cannot choose the element this is one of my great critics about this thing because if you have an enemy with 60 percent you want to attack on that weakness if you are multi-elemental but you cannot be multi-elemental here your shit only hits on your best element. So it's pretty awful overall, but that, that's for every class. And here it's probably your best element. They sometimes support it, sometimes they do not. Crazy shit. And it's pretty sad that this run lost its main characteristics. Just like the egg has no longer any luck and fun based shit. The run no longer gets invisible. That's absolutely atrocious. What the fuck, man? His run no longer gets invisible. Could not they make this to be an active spell to become invisible? And I think that this should be just for the amb ambush. Should be for one single spell. Just like this, any power. What is it? Any bit. It's a divine intervention. It's for the next source of damage. So perhaps this should be for the next source of damage. Should be greatly increase. Because you are invisible. So you should be able to land a great critical. Or for the turn that you become visible. This should 
walk for one single turn. And it would be very nice to become invisible again, to not be locked while invisible because that's absolute bullshit. And to get your additional movement. But the way they put this simply sucks. Now, that's my comment about the degradation of Suran. As for the actual gameplay, not being locked is pretty powerful. It does some damage, it still puts traps and does some critical. The fact that I'm not locked is very powerful. When we consider the spells that I will get, I have no fear and no ability to move the enemy except for pulling with a trap. But thinking that we have liberation, that's release, and other spells, and also you cannot get rocket, simply broken. I think it's the best class we have so far. Should I put it higher? Not being locked, it's too powerful. It probably can lock shit still. I put an S for now. Because someone who plays with it should be having fun. On a group? On a group, it's harder to tell. Because the power of this run on a group was in using fear to, to fix them up into places. To use that shoving trap and things like that. To use a double to stop switch. And it has none of that. But there should be those spells on the other thing. And although everyone has it, no one can evade like strong. The thing can just move through the mob. So it's the best placement we have. This is the best damage we have. This is the best of this. And this is the best placement we have. But I put it on A because that's not one of the basic spells. It's pretty crazy this thing. It's damage. Damage is some kind of support damage. This is damage. This is damage and placement. This is buff and healing and shit. It's pretty solid. Cannot buff action points. If this could buff action points, it could be high up. This one, this one only heals. I put it here. Every time I, I forget that people are not get action points from the enemy now. It cannot be as tier if you cannot buff action points on people. But this one can. It's no longer invisible, but it's unstoppable. It can run even better than the invisibility of one. And position your enemies. Oh. Because it pulls the enemy one thing. <laughs> Great shit. The Enotroph. <coughs> oh, let me get some more. This looks more balanced than, my, than this shit. Is there a way to put a name on this shit or, or something? I change the name, man. Seven or change the I want to change the stupid name. Oh my god, I'm unable to elaborate text in the world. I found to put a new row. Ah. Bucket. Is that the solo one and the other is the, the multi one? The group one.
You cannot get locked man, so broken. This shit can no longer take range away and show people, that's so shitty man. Why would you release and everything that a club does without all its utility? Has zero utility this class, so stupid. Very well. And with Roth. The best second now. On eighty just sent he ended this big rage. So this guy has to be a melee class. He cannot even attack from far away. No slaughtering shovel. No taking movement points away. No bag to run away. No passing the turn of the enemy. It becomes a completely different class that simply goes to the enemy and melee it. Crazy shit. Serious damage. This is a really weird objective to put. But also lose life. Not random, just hit itself like a madman. Moves the caster to the target cell. It's like that Zobo spell that just rushed to the enemy, do some damage. Why is this shit the same, man? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it says the same shit. Crazy shit. How are we, we supposed to judge that? We have been noticing all the time how the classes are losing heavily on their utility and characteristics because there are so few spell places, one base even for spells actually. Why the fucking hell does this guy have two of the same spells? Incomprehensible. Removes one mm, terrible movement points for one turn. This is keeping the movement points. This unblockable shit is what makes grass so broken. But it's only one. Perhaps if it you can use it from far away and it's like that easy spell that tries to take three movement points for one. Wait. Still has some utility. This looks like a bit old shit. It has no way to preserve his own life. It simply goes there and gets shit mixed. It even loses life. It wants to hush it. it. Has no way to heal itself. It has no bag to protect itself. It has no shield. It's no life buffing spell. Resistances. So this seems like the worst trash yet. It is bad, it has no utility, but at least you can attack from far away. This kills itself attack. It has two spells that do the same shit. <laughs> and apparently has no range at all. <laughs> it probably hits... No. So with an enemy in a on a group, it could be good. A Fekka protects it, some healer. Heals it, and it can get buff upon buff upon buff. So in group, it's bad. But by itself, it is going to, going to kill itself on a pew. <laughs> all the oh my god. Place this shit here to start. Let's go. Yosa Moda sings at the start of each turn, boosting their allies with a legendary charisma despite a few false notes. So it's a fucking roulette. I suppose. This false notes is probably a thing. But the roulette also affects the enemy. What is this few false notes? Probably some. 
bad buff like the roulette, but only for allies. Furthermore, these allies triggers me to no end. Can I buff myself or can I not buff myself? I do not know. Because also, you can put movement points, can put, can put action points, can put damage, can put that crazy crapple resistance that is better than the shields of a Fega. I one action point from the other side of the screen. Can put life, can heal, but only his allies. It cannot get dead to itself. So dead is really bad. What if I'm by myself, man? Would this buff myself? Or only my allies so it would be worthless? It's incomprehensible to judge this shit if I do not even know if it affects me. Because if it does not affect me, it's worthless by myself. I might as well go down to useless now. But in a group, it's clearly some OP shit. Unless that false notes really stink. Now, Chatus Wild Life. What the fuck is that? Shut off. Inflicts damage and reduces resistance for the target in the center of the area of effect. It is an area of effect, like some kind of punch that takes resistance. And everyone can attack on that crazy shit. It does not go up. The panda cannot take resistance any longer. This is the only thing that can take resistance in now, it's thing. You can probably cast it several times. Crazy shit. By itself though. I do not know. Toss a coin. Triggers a multi-turn healing effect on the target and gives them a movement bonus. So I can actually heal, still. But what is the target? I'm saying this every time. Can I target myself with this motherfucking piece of shit or not? Because what will I do with this spell if I cannot target myself, if I cannot even summon any shit? Incomprehensible. It's already top it here. Healing will not put it any there. In this I do not know, because I'm by myself, I do not know if the spells work on me. Crazy shit. Irresistible. Unveils the Ozamod's awesome seductive power, allowing them to attract entities in a cross-shaped area of effect around the target. So, this is like the attraction of a sake, but in area. I cannot even choose what I want, it's like the, the tunnel. I'll just pull everything from every direction and then get shit in mix. I have some area spell, it's like punch, on one range, so I have to pull everyone and shit in mix them. Does it pull only the first guy, like the attraction of Sako, pulls everything of that area? It's too hard to understand these other spells, to actually judge it. But it has probably some very powerful movement points that, once again, in group, can be good. But surrounding yourself with mobs is like a pretty shit idea by yourself. When you don't even have some booth, some gobo to get them. The Ozamoda sometimes sing so severely off key that they can remove bewitchments from the targets under the crushing weight of the vocal cords. They can debuff, they can debuff, they can buff shit to everyone, they can reduce resistance, they can heal. This is a real support of this game. It's completely broken in a group. But what are you going to do by yourself with that? If they can debuff, that probably should not be a spell for the buff, otherwise that will be useless. Still, I think it's below this tree because they have movement points, I have no ability of movement as an ulcer and can no longer stop them all by summoning. I have no no boar to push them away, I have no gobo. 
I have no longer any action points buff to. I do not have any summons for my buffs to work on, for my healing to work on. And I do not even know if this healing works on myself. So, an Oza Modus, which was a S tier class for soloing, is pretty shit enough. Is it, is it worse than. Is it better than Kradal? Kra only has damage. This guy. Only has some silly damage. Oza has damage to reduce resistance. That's better for the next spells. And I'm supposing I can probably in at least one or two of these spells actually buff myself. So it's actually a little better than these things. But still pretty bad. In a group though, pretty fucking great. Now the fact. At the end of each of the turns, the Fekka places a glyph around themselves. Each enemy entity located within the glyph takes damage in the best element. This is absolute bullshit. I'm going to put this thing on useless. On the unuseless. Because what if a fighting man king when you just put a glyph? What if a fighting the the cool town and that is that friend as a do demo and you just glyph that shit? You have no control over your putting that glyph. You are a walking hazard. You are about to kill everyone on Kimbo. <laughs> This is too stupid. By himself, he not be doing him by himself. So I put him C for now. Shield of Fate applies vitality bonus and increases the target's resistance. Some life, some resistance. Let's probably fix it resistance. Is this one action point? Like the classic spell of Fekka, is that a 4 action point that you can only use at every 5 turns on one target? Like the resistance spell of Fekka. We have no idea, and so we can not judge that shit. Increases its rank though. Oh, wait, but it killed everyone on Kimbo. It cannot get any higher than that in group. Target allies in an area of effect to let you take damage instead of them. It can sacrifice absolute bullshit. It has used this on himself and sacrifice, so he has the resistance. Pretty weird. Worthless by himself. Only works in a group. Flicks damage and still a small amount of life. That's the mama map. It shows that it's probably shit. They are not inflicts damage and causes push it back around the target. To the super spell that I hit, everything near the target is threat. Probably myself. Like some one cell melee uh, dispersion of crap. So this thing it really breaks the game. It's fucking everyone. Just putting leaf out of my control, and that's the only leaf I can put. Absolute bullshit. We have no idea. This is every turn, several times per turn, once every five turns. It has no immunity, it no longer has any shield, it has no buffs. So this pack seems pretty awful. Even if this can be used for in a group. But he can just sacrifice people and then be healed. That's that thing is so crippling, man. The inability to control your belief. Even if you are not doing Kimbo that you kill everyone, you are still trying to do some challenges. You are trying to to kill such enemy fast. You are trying to do LA test and only attack one target. You are trying to do focus. You cannot do any of that with this stupid class. It's completely broken for the group. Everyone will hate Fekka. It will break every fucking challenge. 
by himself, even though he cannot do ta challenges. Even though this spell is worthless for himself. And if this can be used every turn, it's probably not good for himself only. It's pretty fucking bad. I think it's worse than also me. Ah, the class seems good, man, near these classes now. It's only comparatively bad, but it cannot push, it cannot do anything. Yeah, it's perfect. I can these, though. I can these, though. <laughs> the thing is that craft is a downgrade so heavily that I cannot actually put it any higher up. I have to compare with the original classes. Oh, this was it. There is from back here. Sarda. Sarda is very hard to understand. Each totem on the field adds a fixed damage bonus to the Sarda. Only damage, and that is it. Quite weird. The caster takes the form of a on Moor Wolf, increases physical damage but reduces the resistance. There are several transformations like that on Mark Fu, and I think it would be fun to play around. The Sarda stopped being a tree to become a wolf. It's probably weird. And it can only fight on this mode. Increase its physical damage. It can use the spells like normal on this mode. Like the Panda, when he's drunk, he cannot use the, the Flamish. He cannot use the Release. He cannot use the normal spells. And he still use every spell. Teleports that to the target cell, inflicts damage around the destination cell. It requires this state. This requirement of state is completely shit, so he can only fight if he's transformed. On Wakifu and other mechanics, the spells would have a dual effect. They would do something on the normal state and do something different on the transformed state. But the fact that I can only use this spell while you transform it is pretty fucking stupid. Get your back up and unleash a violent close combat attack. Do damage, teletransport and do damage. So it's a damager and it has movement for teletransport and that's nice. It's a bone that does damage and has a very powerful attack up at it. The transformation buff. So it's a solid damage boy that can get to the enemy. And it summons a totem and a random element that improves the Sardar's damage. The totem applies a poison to enemies in its element and bonus to allies that element. This sounds very good. Because even if you're not using the totem for damage, you can use it to block like those moon totems. It even poisons the enemy and buffs the ally. The fact that you cannot choose the enemy can fuck the challenges up, but it can also be well used if he knows how to place it. And he gets a fixed damage bonus because of end of death that he'll do more damage. This works. He can fight from far away, actually, using Tordis and money. Or he can go to the enemy and fuck him up. So Sadida is a pretty solid. He can block the enemy with those Tordis. It's very hard, like... Even if the enemy has more movement points than you, if you can frequently put a Totem in front, you have to walk around it, and you can easily run. The fact that you can no longer take movement points or put any dolls though sucks. The fact that you can no longer heal yourself and put the Arbor of View sucks. The problem here is that I'm comparing to the other classes instead of just these mechanics. I think this kind of bond sucks for him. This one can bond, but it's very unstable at taking action points. This one can no longer buff itself, apparently. So the Sarda seems to be pretty solid. Although he cannot run from everyone, he can block line of sight and do a, some very cool shit. Like, teleport to the target self. You just bond away and that's some invaluable spell when you're fighting by yourself trying to survive. You can bond and block sight with a 
totally, pretty fucking great. On a group, he probably cannot do as much damage as this guy. The Totems can get annoyed, but he can buff people. What does this do again? This will come down. Because he has no moving spells. He can walk around the mall, but has no moving spells. This one you are comparing with both buffs and damage. So he does not compete direct, directly with a Yope. Should compete directly. Damage is pretty good too. This makes more sense. And here. So it's a top type of both contents. This one seems to suck solo. This one is a little better, you know, works on a group and solo. Crash things either way. When you compare with the, the options you have for damage and utility. Eka is pretty bad. Feka is pretty fucked up. It's not really bad, it's straight away fucked up. It's fucking the challenge, it's fucking the mobs. The Eno sucks alone, but it's pretty. It might be pretty solid since you do some cool damage. Takes movement points, only one though. Every class is so bad, man. It's a downgrade for everyone, really. The Sacria. The Sacria against suffering and power based on the remaining health percentage. This is pretty different from the Sacria we have. The Sacria we have gets buffed by taking damage. And then he uses that damage to heal himself and be immortal. This is not that. He can take damage. If the enemy heals a Sakya, that is worthless. He lost all his damage because he was healed. So he has to play it dangerously, like the work for Sakya. This is pretty crazy playing mode. Around the target, so this seems to be like a small cross. Like a cross like this. But instead of 5 cells, it's only 4. It's only around the target. Crazy shit. Just damage. No clean. This one heal. Let's you steal life points from an enemy. But can also be used to transfer some of your life. If cast on an ally. This is kind of nice. Depending on the power of the spell. You... One of the great problems of Dofus is that you cannot actually balance your spells. Like you are transferring your life. What if you want to transfer 8,000? 800, I mean. And what if you only want to transfer 50 to get things right? Like on the Sea Lark again of Free Ghost, but you need to be under 90. The fact that you cannot, you do not have a bar, that you scroll and choose the potency of the spell when you do not want to kill shit, etc. It's a big problem. And this, that you life steal or give some of your life, not having control exact of the amount, but have a fixed power of it, it's pretty bad news. But if I transfer too much or too little. Now, summons a temporary demon. Does not tell how much. How long? But the Oza has no summons. I have said that several times. And the Sacre has. It says this game is based on a holy plane. And you can understand it because of the Grimori. But the classes have been entirely fucked up. There is nothing enutroph about this Eno. There is very little Oza Modas. There is nothing of Oza Modas if you cannot summon with an Oza Modas. It's pretty weird. This characterization when you just broke completely out of what the class was meant to be. The Samana does not summon. Crazy shit. The Any is one of the most characteristic class. It actually heals. But that's about it for characteristics. The Yop Chu, though. The Kra became what it was actually always meant to be. Ranged damage. Not broken utility or powerful life. Steam shit. Like, Kra literally life is still madly, insanely damaged from far away. It can move the enemies from far away. It can zero their movement points. It can take away their range. It can shove them. 
Not this one though. Just damage. No one is using this in a group. The weakness get more balanced. But by himself, this guy suck. So the summon themselves are weak. Oh, it damages itself. I want that. You can keep it healing if you keep it alive. Or if you die in three turns. The suffering. If I'm dying real bad, if you put this shit. It only has this spell, it has every spell. This one seems to be the most powerful one. <laughs> Just. That sacrifice it all, kamikaze it all. The others are kind of weak. Good on shit. And I also hope they are big. Like this is very tiny. This is a colossal one the size of a crackler. Or a minotaur ball. Inflicts damage in the best element and is still characteristics on the target. Based on the suck. Vampiric but for element. So I have three fucking damage spells based on my life. And that's suck. Yeah. I cannot fool people. I cannot change the place with people. Neither far away nor close. So Sakria, which was usually agility, because the most important part was its capacity of moving about, can no longer do that. So Sakria become significantly worse in a group. This 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 much worse. Can you put a summon that kills itself so it cannot hold anything with that summon. It cannot get healing because it will lose all its fucking damage if it gets healed. So what is it going to do on a fucking group? What's the point of a sacred in a group? It cannot do damage if it is healed. And it cannot actually contribute with any utility of pulling the mob or doing anything of changing places. Place. So Sakria is one of the worst class in a group that I see here. By itself though, this should be pretty solid because it can steal stats from the mob. It can do basic damage. It can do some life stealing. And it can do even more damage. Now it do some damage and it's still based on the stuff. The steel is based but on the damage. It's unclear. They are too ambiguous. But by itself it seems like it can life steal and survive and get stronger. Once again, in a group, it cannot do that. A Fekka cannot even shield these things normally. The Osa has no crap hole to keep this thing alive while it's dying. So in a group, it will lose all its damage if it's healed. Absolute crazy shit. But the more... And power, it also needs power. So it affects the other spells, not only this one. Still. Now the Panda. Substantially increase the panda's close combat damage if they are fighting very high. This, on the get go, is shit. You cannot use a weapon. Man. What the fuck is wrong with this game? There is something like that on Wakfu or some other game. And it was really stupid. Like, what if I want to use a limbo wand? I have to lose one movement point, one action point. Just to get this increased damage bullshit. So this is completely ridiculous. To lose a part of my equipment. To get some damage. Increase the panda's damage. But imposes all the trade-offs of drinking. Even in moderation. Because. So I get trade-offs. What's the trade-offs? I lose my ability to cast spells or what? I lose one movement point. Do I get my resistance? It increases my damage instead of giving me any special spell of shit. Cobra Kai. I can jump. That's very nice. Inflicts damage in the best element in a cross shaped area. So, like that Yop Sword spell. 
probably has a rank. No, I teleport and it deals damage teleport. It's pretty cool. Although it can really fuck up every fucking challenging existence if I just want to bond there. What if I just want to bond me? I cannot because it will fuck that challenge hitting people. This ah a monturation of effects on a single spell. It's really bad. Kama thinks it's being smart. They think they are They are making the thing interesting, the spell being cool, but no. It really fucks up. I just want to jump. I do not want to hit anyone. I do not want to fuck that shines me. Why cannot I just jump? So what I, I only have things. Oh by himself, no. I jump is kind of good. But on a group, it sucks. The worst one in a group you cannot have a weapon. Jumps by itself. Cast on yourself to increase the spell's damage by charging it up. The spell can be cast in front of the caster to inflict substantial damage in a line. Inflicts damage and immobilizes the target for one turn. So it cannot take resistance like it did. The entire point of pandas was was grabbing people and throwing them away. It has zero movement spells now. It can mobile the attack for one turn, but that's about it. It cannot put the, the panda was that blocks people. But it can jump and do a cross-shaped damage. What have they done with this class? It has not enough the panda. Polishing, what the, this has to do with the First edition. So Panda can do some shit damage, some sick damage. I do not know if this is mobilization is only nearby, probably is. The fact that it can jump though it's very powerful. Every cousin can jump, it hardly dies. It can just teleport away from the enemy. Shit gets bad. In a group man, it simply does damage and fights the challenge but by trying to jump. Insanity. And that's that's my thing. Does not consider much of this except for Kra that he gets one range on this. That's about it. So by themselves Kra lost all utility. It cannot keep itself alive. People have to understand that. It cannot shove the monster, it cannot take things away. And if it can, if the, the Grimoire has spells like that, everyone can. Yet one range of that is really worthless. The actual spells that you get on Kra is doing damage and nothing else. The enemy will get to you in a few turns and fuck you up real bad. That's the, the review for Cry, and that's why I place it so low. Eka lost all its characteristics. All it does now is some silly damage. And it buffs itself and does damage. And it can build up some random buff eventually. So that's why I place it so low. Theka, it has a spell that we have no idea how frequently he can use. Can use on a single target and gives vitality and resistance every time, every five turns. That costs five action points. One, we have no idea. And besides that, it just fucks the challenge by like placing a glyph and weakling every turn. What the fuck? And the most worthless one attacks nearby. One of the spells tries to kill him, does damage to himself. And he has to attack by being on melee in order to gain his buff. So you rush to the enemy and you attack. You cannot heal yourself, you cannot put a back to protect yourself, you have no resistance. You just attack on your melee. And you die. That's what you happen if you are a melee alone by yourself. You cannot jump away, you cannot try to survive. Life steal or some shit. But there's not even life stealing. You only attack on melee, there is no life steal. What the fuck? This is the worstless class yet. Panda, we just read. 
can you can do what you can jump yeah it fucks the challenge in a group but by itself it's very actual to jump you can jump and attack jump and attack it's not the best gameplay you cannot take resistance cannot throw the mob away but yeah it's better than, than the previous ones the oza he can take some resistance he might or might not be buffing himself. He's only here because I'm supposed that at least one works on himself. If two or more works, it can actually be a little better. It has no fucking sounds. It has no fucking jump. It has no fucking movement spells. He just debuffs the enemy and tries to survive. It's pretty shitty. But this combo, very powerful combo, of being able to debuff an enemy can save your life quite often. What is it? The ability of might buffing himself and pulling the enemy and hitting. Puts him here for now. The stack there we just seen is pretty solid alone. I can put it. Nah, I cannot put it here because it cannot pull the enemy, it cannot change place, it has zero mobility. It can only get damage and then do some cool damage and life steal back and pull some summon. That can be fun. But it's completely lack of mobility, it cannot put it any higher than this. The seller cannot choose when take action point away. It unweakly takes action points away against his wheel. It, however, can jump. It can jump a lot. It can make the enemy jump. It can teleport shit around. It can literally jump and go back the same turn with a single spell. So it might jump there and attack and jump there and attack from around the other world. So it seems pretty safe to say this thing will survive most fights easily. No one can take range main, that's so absurd. Where's the... Almost no one can take movement points away. This guy can, but he has to be on melee anyway. The enemy has to heal himself in order to buff himself. He can no longer give himself action points. That's about it. He can no longer push the enemy. If he gets locked, that's it. He's fucked. He can heal himself a little. He can put some flower that heals himself and do some damage, and he can do some damage himself. The Yope can no longer bounce. He can only change the place like a Sakti should be able to do. So by himself, that spell is worthless, apparently. Unless he can just teleport with it, but the game is too unclear for us to judge it based on a supposition that he can change it places with the air. He, however, seems to have some broken insane damage by having all those buffs on melee and less one action point. Less one action point is really precious, man. Even more now that we start with a pet that gives action point and it seems it's very it's much easier than normal. Apparently it's a 100% chance of putting action point on shit. So this guy is just going to eat enemies with 8 daggers per turn. Agility Orb using Kogu Cutters 8 times per turn. G Brawn. The Sagda. It's higher than all of those because it can put a fucking token. I do not know if every turn, every 10 turns. I'm hoping, I'm supposing some balance at amount. But he can do that, and that you buff himself and fuck the enemy. And then he can transform and do some pretty solid damage, apparently, nearby. So, if he release, all those spells can come very nice with the ability to block the path with a token. I'm supposing it has some life points to survive some damage. So it's better than these, even though he cannot jump. But blocking the path is... Basically has good. And this run simply cannot get locked. Besides not getting locked. Yeah, 
I can put some trap and some damage, so he can probably like, move far away and attack from far away, creating on his weapon, and every shit you get critical with this. And then he can place the freaking trap. And this is pretty weak, man. He has a spell that simply moves his trap and he has own single trap. If there are no Grimori trap spells, that would be worthless. But yeah, he has some skills. He cannot move shit, but by himself, that's that's relevant. Yes, he can just throw away. Put a trap to throw the enemy away and shit. Now, in a group. In a group, the most worthless is Panda. Because from C to Z. Because in a group. Let me save this shit. Yeah, it's safe. <laughs> I hadn't lost it. This is the first one though. Fuck me dead. This is the solo one. Well I saved it, so yeah. Good thing I saved. I cannot exit this shit. The fuck? Well, I can exit my screen. So, Panda is the most useless. Because, as I said, he cannot throw people, he cannot do anything like that that contributes to the group. He can just get it drunk by himself and attack by himself. Some very weird attacks that has loading time and some shit. So it's worse than crap that can actually just hit like normal from far away. The Kamehameha probably only on line of sight and some shit. Completely off. And the Sakri is a little better than Panda. The Sakri, you can just abandon him, he can put some salmon to do something for a little while. Overall, he can heal your friends and shit. But the problem with it is that puts it so low. Because if you heal him, he becomes useless and loses all his damage. Crazy shit. You debuff him by, by doing that. Apparently. The crack would be a little high, but complete lack of any utility. Doing simple damage. That puts it any higher. The Fekka is way up here. Because he can probably buff people from that things. But his damage output seems to sink. To, to, to stink. And that putting off Glyph will fuck so much challenge. So many challenges. Can even kill on some certain fights. Like, yeah, we are fighting Olga here. Oh no, I put a Glyph. The Olga now is full health again. Yoga now has insane damage. Who was the retarded fuck that put this glyph on the passive? What the fuck is wrong with people? I, uh, I want to take it down now. Because I just remembered Yoga can also get fucked by a spell like that. Anyway, with him is the, the, the Xelor. Because it has no reliability. As I mentioned, the, the branch, the healing branch, or any other mob, he cannot stop them from fucking everything up. Because he can only take action points on certain turns. And he can only take action points by hitting. Once again, once you take action points from Noga, once you 
take action points while doing focus or some shit? Well, you cannot. That's beyond your power. Want to do some times fly? Well, you better not attack every two turns. You cannot attack one turn and the other not. One turn, the other not. That's absolutely demented. How much you better to just put the stupid one action point spell for him to action ape anything and call it a day? Why do you have to try to cram so much things together and make these nice mechanics that you only fuck the fight? The game has not even started and I'm already stressed about these classes. These two cannot do shit without failing every challenge in the game. This hits against his will, he attacks mobs against his will, and this guy cannot do his thing and take action points without attacking people. The Eka, some solid damage, that has some very annoying buffs. That's basically it. So these guys are here, it's a little better than this pure damage. Because this can also buff people, but that's about it. He cannot, he cannot buff action points to anyone to have any further utility. But the fact that he can transport shit puts him a little higher than if he had no transportation too. The Eno went from useless, from the only useless one, to beat here. Because crazy shit. Now that there are people to heal him, he just go there and hit them up like he wants. That's all he does. So it seems to become much better as a hitter. Although inferior to Yope, so it's here. This run went down from the only S tier to B. Because now he can, cannot contribute to the fight. He lost his fear. He lost his traps that you shape that show people that takes movement points away. So his contribution to the group is much less than before. He can simply do some damage now and run away, which is much less important in a group that someone can just free you and help you out. By itself, that's God tier. You cannot get locked. With, with others, that's very hardly used. It that could be S tier if he had fear and other spells to actually combo with that free movement through the mob. But nah, you can simply do damage and that's it. The Sadida is way up here because he can block people. He can buff people with those totems. And he can do some pretty solid damage apparently. All of that is very available in the group. He can no longer take action, can take movement points, can no longer have the super push songs. He all powerful. That was his thing. And that was much better. If he simply had that stupid shit, he would be S tier. If the simplest one had the fear, he would be S tier. If the Yop had a bomb, he would be S tier. But they really fucked the class up by taking that things. The Shellor had the action point buff. If the Annie had the action point buff, the Shellor could be B or A, the Annie would go to S with Oza. And the Yop just mentioned every time he can simply do some sick damage while helping people and become immune. That's only working group though. That's crazy. And Oza is on the only S because yeah in group. It is C tier on, on the bono one. It's the only S because he all he does is buffing people. He buffs people while healing. He buffs people every start of turn. He takes the resistance of mobs away. It's the only thing that takes the resistance of mobs away. Oh Yop also apparently of one or several, I don't know, it's unclear. But he hit in area while taking resistance from the the target mob. Crazy shit. And that is That's my placement. That's my tier for this temple was based solely on the very ambiguous description of the spells on the site. There is no actual numbers of the spells. What if the Kra actually hits like a little from far away. Then he'll go up. But thinking it's balanced, they hit basically the same thing. The actually thing is a utility. 
Can they attack from far away? Can they move the ball? Can they take movement points? Can they contribute to the fight? How? And the versatility of this class that I have placed it like that are just so. It is the solo one again. Once again, based on the utility by himself. Somehow, Yop, without being able to jump and get immune, still beat here because it's so freaking powerful. You can put a Kawot in exchange with it eventually. If there is drop of summons, too, we can work with that. Or not, as we have in a group, it can eat things away. That's my, my tears. See it, banana? Are you even going to watch this shit? That was it.